Hey everyone. Well, it's in the mid 70s today after last week being in the 90s. We even had a day this week where it's going to be in the 40s at night. A couple days like that actually. I think Wednesday at night is supposed to get down to 45, which is pretty cold for us here in Southern California. Um, today there has been, when I went outside about 1 o'clock, it was pretty smoky outside. Now, we don't have any of those wildfires near me, but the wind can carry the smoke for hundreds of miles. And it was pretty smoky out there, like a, kind of smelled like a giant campfire outside. Um, and I just don't do really well breathing in smoke. It just makes my lungs feel like they're just tightening up. Uh, so... Uh, needless to say, I didn't stay outside very long, but um, I did manage to pick, well I picked four persimmons, I've been, they're not quite and Look ready. at our persimmons, they are so close. I've actually picked a few of them, um, if I see that they're ready, but on the tops they're still a little bit green as you can see. So, really we prefer that they don't have any green. And then, uh, let's see, down here, we have some that have a lot of green still on them. But, I actually moved some of the leaves out of the way so they could get a little more sunshine. And then up here, you see how good they are? I have some picked inside, I'll show you. So close, so, but within the next two weeks, they will all come down. Um, but I've been able to get maybe 20 to 25 a day off the tree, uh, because every day some are coming to that point of, pick me, pick me. So I did pick a few, I'm just going to go get them. So one of my jobs here uh, come this time of year is to pick the persimmons, but I don't just pick them. I have to wash them all as well, and then they get set to complete their ripening. They just sit out in boxes, and uh, we have just boxes everywhere of persimmons getting ripe. But I'll just show you. Uh, these are pretty good sized. This is the kind that you eat. It has to get mushy. So I managed. I picked four of them today. These were lower, so I was able to just pick them right off the branch. But as you can see, this one still has a little bit of green on the top. But that'll be fine. That'll still ripen. So anyhow, yes, the persimmons. This is a pretty good size one. It's uh, you know good apple sized or even um, uh, like a bell pepper size. So um, I think this year we're going to have a bumper crop and uh, now the landlady loves them. She can just eat them uh, until she's about to fall over. You know, she, she could easily eat 10 a day, no problem. But you have to eat them when they're mushy. And so they have a ways to go for that, uh, probably a few weeks. But you have to pick them when they're hard. You can't pick them when they're mushy because they just fall apart on you. So, um, yeah, that's a little persimmon. And now for a little bit of a crochet update. I'm still working on the red blanket, but I should be done with it. Uh, well, I won't. I'll finish the main blanket part today. And then I'll just do the border tomorrow. So uh, I have, let's see, well, I, these red sections, I is done with Red Heart Cherry Red. And I've been doing 14 rows, and this is all done in Crystal Waves. So 14 rows of the Cherry Red. I'm not sure I have enough to do 14 for this last section of red. Um, I would say it's iffy. I have to do three more rows. That's very iffy. But I have more red, just not cherry red. And 
I'm just going to take that red as far as it'll go and I'll use it up and then I have just this little sniggle left of the uh, Great Fizz. I'm going to just use that up till it's gone and then I have this is the Big Twist America I think it's the Americana and I'm going to do the border in that because right, so, it's kind of it's a little bit softer than the red heart it's a lot softer it's nice and squishy soft so I'll do that I have another skein of this but this should be enough to get me around the whole thing and you know one thing about these blankets is I've been trying to figure out uh, how wide to make them and I sort of based my initial chain count because you have to do it in in uh, fours for the crystal waves so I sort of like took the Jada blanket and she does 110 and I know that that's going to come out to be with a, a five and a half uh, millimeter hook which by the way okay I'm just gonna it's not slight non sequitur I picked up my first clover hook it's okay it's I'm not gonna say it's tremendous it, it took a lot of getting used to because it's so much lighter than just my regular 5.5 uh, .5. but um, anyways and, and you know all Jada's blankets are done with a 5.5 and uh, I don't know about yours but mine always come out to be like exactly three feet wide so based on that stitch count uh, the blue blanket I chained uh, what was it 132 and I felt like it still was a, it was a little bit too wide because remember these have to like lay in a hospital bed kind of thing so there shouldn't be a lot of excess um, so I felt like 132 was slightly too wide and so I took it down to 120 chains for this one and I think that's probably a pretty good amount and let me just see how, let me see if I can measure this. I don't have a really flat place to lay this out. Um, let's see. Well, it comes out to about, just about 40 inches wide, which is what I wanted. And when I get the border on, it'll probably be about 41 42 inches wide and that that's plenty so uh, if you're going to do the crystal waves and you want to just do kind of a an easy blanket like this to donate um, try 120 chains with a five millimeter hook and uh, you're good to go uh, let's see what else um, you know, I still have three bears that I have made. I haven't put them together because I keep thinking I'm going to make a tutorial on uh, sewing on arms and legs because some people have a huge problem sewing on arms and legs and other parts. And I, I'm like, eh, do I put them together or not? They're just taking up a whole project bag just waiting. So... I, I'm just not sure. In the meantime, uh, well, a friend of mine had taken this bear. She thought she was going to sell it uh, for me to somebody, but um, she couldn't ever get a hold of the person. And let's see if I can just put this bear back together here. Now this is a Sharon Oyala bear that I... Uh, modified and so this is my little red hat society bear and I couldn't find a pattern for little hats so I just had to make one up and 
somewhere I think I've written down the pattern, but yeah, that's my little Sharon, Sharon Oyala Bear. Now, what I have modified and uh, Sharon Cloud, uh, Sharon K. Cloud, this might be something that you can also modify on the little dolls that you're making, is you get to a point where you just do back loops only so that you expose the front loops. Now this is not an Sharon Oyala pattern. And then you just crochet some little, they would be like the top of the little anklet socks. So, um, yeah, there's, there's that. And you don't put two stitches in each, uh, in each of the front loops. You just do one in one and two in the next and one and two. Otherwise, if you put two in each one, they just stick straight out and you want to kind of lay, lay down a little bit. But if you only put one in each, then it's too tight. So uh, one, two, one, two, one, two, all the way around. And then when I do this little, uh, let's see if I can show it, this little, little um, lacy, kind of lacy edge. What I do is, um, I think it's chain four, skip a stitch, um, then slip stitch in, chain four, skip a stitch, slip stitch in. Um, and so, yeah, that's how I do the little, the little lacy part. And that is also what I did for the arm, for the sleeves. And that's also the, the ruffle, which you can kind of, let's see, yeah, you can see how it's kind of loopy all the way around. So, yeah, that's how I do that. Um, which you can use on anything that you make. Just you know, if you want to add a ruffle, uh, just do a row of back loops only, and then you've exposed the front loop so that you can work in it. Um, and yeah, just make stuff up as you go. What I did find when I made this hat is that if you if you're just doing a, um, I don't know what I took this up to, uh, maybe um, like 32 around. But if you just keep saying, well, I'll just keep doing 32 around and it'll eventually become like this, this uh, cylinder, it, it's too rounded. So what I did was, um, because I wanted it to kind of be flatter on the sides is I actually, uh, after I exposed, I did a back loops only row, but when I was doing that back loops only, I also decreased. And uh, I decreased down, like if I was uh, at 32, uh, I think I decreased, well it wouldn't have been 32, would it? Maybe it was 30. This doesn't look like 36. Wait a minute. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's 24. And then there's the back loops. Okay, I think I did 30. Sorry. Um, so 30, and then I went uh, down from 30 to 24. And so, it, and then I just did 24 around. So, um, that gives it more of a slight, straighter edge uh, with a little indent. So, now, uh, I did see a, a pattern at one point, now, and uh, I will try to link the picture um, here. For if you're making amigurumi and you want a flatter circle to start with, then you would start with eight uh, single crochets, and that gives you flat. And if you have six single crochets and you're expanding from there, then you're going to have a little, uh, a little hump to it, a little more rounded. 
and uh, if you do five, it gets more rounded, and four, more rounded, you know, um, and finally just kind of like peaks. So, uh, I'll see if I can find that diagram, and I'll just put it in right here. You know, I got so frustrated on my last video on the uploading part because it was just a 15 minute video and it took it 13 hours to upload. Is that my server? Is that YouTube? I don't know. It was so frustrating. And this one is already going to be 20 minutes or so, so I guess I should cut it off here. Probably won't be ready till Monday. Um, yeah. Uh, we'll see because you just never know how long it's going to take YouTube to figure out is trying to upload something. So I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye-bye.